How can you help your people be resilient in the workplace? If you're in a leadership role with your team, with your organization, we're going to lay out exactly what you can focus on in this video. I'm Ravi Tangri, and this is a soul engineering series to help you bring more of your heart and soul into your work and the rest of your life. And thank you all for those of you who are sharing this video to please move it forward and and liking it to help me get the word out and thank you for your comments i do welcome the feedback so i know exactly what videos you want moving forward make sure you subscribe so that you can get the videos as soon as they come out How can you help your people be more resilient in a fast changing chaotic world like today? Well, there's some key things that you can focus on. So let's jump in first into what is resilience. Let's just be really clear what it is. It's your ability to recover from difficult events in your life. So major changes, how quickly can you respond and recover from that so that you're back to functioning as well as possible. And what I found is that the core to that is someone's perceived sense of control over themselves and what's happening around them. It's called personal power. So I say perceived because it's not reality. It is a perception. And so it can be developed. It can be grown. So let's look at what is personal power in the workplace. What does it mean? What can you do as a leader to help people grow that? It's about what's in your control. And what human beings tend to do is they focus on what's not in their control. So as a leader, one of the biggest things you can do is show them those things that are in the, their control. What is it that they actually can control instead of focusing what on what they, they haven't uh, any any impact on and you can coach them in that the things that they can control but also the things they can influence so they actually see how they have some influence and that they can actually make a difference you can shift their personal power through your coaching through your support of them when there are successes doesn't have to be huge ones small ones even support celebrate them so that they actually feel that they're doing something, that they're making uh, connections. Another critical thing is social connection, which can be hard with so many people now working from home. It's really important to have some times where people can connect informally so that it's not just on meetings online. You know, you can have... Um, coffee breaks online you can have uh sort of pizza parties everyone has to bring their own or you can send to them but where they can connect it's really important and again in your coaching to make sure that they are staying connected in their personal lives as well because it makes an impact on who they are and what how they show up in at work uh Linked to this is taking breaks. It's critical to be able to take a break so you can breathe. So you can, uh, and sometimes the the research is showing when people are working at home, sometimes they just plug through. It's really important in those times for them to step away from that desk to breathe, to be able to uh, get some perspective. And again, that's something that you can do with coaching. Another thing that can suffer in stressful times is uh, diet and exercise. Eating healthy exercise are really, really important. Encouraging people to do that can make a difference. Um, another thing that absolutely helps in terms of the stress and everything people uh, are experiencing is practices uh, such as mindfulness, meditation, relaxation, these can be done either in person or online as resources for your people to be able to help them um, 
manage their internal state so that they're better at things like emotional regulation and other things that, that, that make a difference so they're not losing their top um, uh, so much. You may find that a lot of people have been, their fuses have been pretty short with all the changes and challenges the last few years. That's because they've been worn down, the resilience. Other skills that you can support, encourage through your coaching, it's not just about getting the work done and driving it. If you do that, you are going to burn your people out. And it's it, you, whatever the resilience, you're going to wear them out. It's investing time in self-reflection, self-awareness. I mean, that's part of coaching is self-reflection, self-awareness. The coaches and the leader is meant to help the people do that. But it's also about how they're uh, dealing with all the things in their life because it contributes. People used to say there's a work life and there's a home life. There's one life. You cannot draw a line that separates it. What happens in one impacts the other. So this is where you as a leader have to know where to draw the line and pushing for results if your people are burning out. They need that support so that they can uh, understand what they are capable of when we might have to adjust in, uh, goals in the, in, in the short term to be more realistic in terms of what they can actually handle. Now, something else here that's really, really critical is you as a leader model what you expect of your people. So it's absolutely critical for you to do all of these things to grow your own resilience. And this is the thing, when you're in a leadership role, often what happens is you don't, the last person you support is you. You're always doing for others, not just at work, but at home and with your friends and everything else, aren't you? But you don't do anything for yourself. Do you do the self-care? Do you do uh, work on exercise and health and, and such? Do you do all the things you need to build your resilience? That's number one. Another thing is to bring in an optimistic view of the future so that you you can see how you're moving forward. Now, I've worked with a lot of teams, a lot of uh, groups that may be either in crazy environments that they have no control over or they are a team in an organization where the leaders have no vision, no understanding of what to do, no clue. And it's obvious with all the reaction that happens in large bureaucratic organizations sometimes. And so I say, okay, if you cannot get a clear vision of how you're moving forward, you can create a clear vision of how you are responding in this chaos, of how you can be agile and move quickly to adapt to all of this. So that's, that's something that you can build with your group, with your organization, with your team. And with goals, make sure that they're challenging, but make sure they're realistic based on what the capacity is with the constraints, with all the changes we've had over the workforce the last couple of years with moving home and all of the other stresses that are there. The goals may need to be reevaluated. Just driving for the results can be a self-sabotaging downward spiral. So these are things that you can focus on as a leader. Now, one final thing I want to touch on is that there are three specific behaviors uh, that research has shown resilient employees engage in. Number one is emotional regulation. So they know and they choose how to respond. They just don't, don't just blow up at things as they happen. Two is self-compassion. You know, to be able to recognize that some of the sadness, the upset, the, the heaviness that we're feeling is normal. It's not, and not beating yourself up for it. And finally, mental agility. So that's problem solving, being able to respond, not assuming the way it's always been done is the way that it's always going to be. So these are three behaviors, three skill sets that you can develop and harnessing your people moving forward.